Hey guys, Yvonne here at YvonneManna.com. In this video, I want to show you how to promote your Teespring products on Google Display Ads, where we can reach billions of people as we show our ads across millions of different websites and YouTube channels. So unlike Facebook ads, for example, where the majority of your ads are shown on Facebook, maybe Instagram, with Google Display Ads, we can show it all over the web. And so in this video, I want to take you step by step, create our Teespring product and then actually promote it on Google Display Ads. Let's go through a brief agenda of what exactly we're going to cover here. So the first thing we're going to do is of course create a Teespring listing. So this can be any product. When you go to teespring.com, you can create anything you want, a mug, a hoodie, a shirt. We will probably just create a shirt because that's the most kind of basic product and that's probably what the majority of you guys are going to be doing anyway. Next, we are going to create a Google Ads account. So if you don't have a, a, a Google Ads account, I will show you where to go and how to set one up. There is something, a thing or two you have to do to make sure that the process is smooth for you and that you can follow along with me. So I'll be taking you through that process as well. Next, we're going to set up the tracking between Google Ads and Teespring. So when you make sales, you're able to see them inside of your Google Ads account. Then we're going to create a limited time offer and a promotion code so it's easier for you to sell your product. Now, this step is optional. You don't need a promotion code. You don't need a limited time offer, but it's something that can help you out. We are then going to create our Teespring design. We're going to make it look nice and prepare it to run ads with. So we can't just take our listing and promote it. We have to make it a little bit nicer looking. We have to make it a bit flashy because remember, we're trying to get people's attention. So we have to use something to make our listing in this case going to be a shirt a little bit more attention grabbing okay and that's what i'll be showing you how to do here as well and then finally we are going to promote it on google display ads before we dive into this guys make sure to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and so i can keep putting them out also make sure to hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when i release more videos just like this that being said, let's move on to step number one and create our Teespring listing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to teespring.com and create an account. If you already have an account, great. Just click on login here and sign in as you normally would. If you don't, click on start designing right over here. And then what you're going to want to do at the bottom here is click new to Teespring create an account if you don't have one. Then what you have to do here is enter your name or company name, enter the email that you want to use and your password, select I'm not a robot if you aren't, and click on sign up. And you should be able to get into your account right there and then, super simple, nothing else is really required of you, you don't need to enter credit card details or anything like that. I already have an account so I'm just going to go ahead and click login and sign up with my details and I will see you on the next page. All right, awesome. So I signed in using my account. This is exactly what you will see. You'll probably see, you know, zero products or ordered, zero profits. You won't see any listings, which is totally fine. So before we start designing, let's quickly do one thing, and that is enter our payout details so that once we do sell products, we are able to get paid. So what you want to do here is click on settings at the bottom left. By the way, Teespring does change their interface quite often. So if you don't see a settings at the bottom or you don't see the payout details here, um, just look around, like for example, payouts is probably the next best thing that would make sense here, or go into tools and services and, and, and just look around, they will have it somewhere. Basically, you wanna enter your payment information. So right now it's in settings, they change it so often, who knows where it's gonna be in a week or two, okay? So we're just going to scroll down here until you see where it says set your PayPal address or pay in year. So you can enter either one. Um, I got a few questions asking, hey, are there any other payment options? As far as I know, no, but go ahead and contact support at teespring.com. Give them, tell them your situation and see if they have any other options, custom made options available for you. But as far as I know, these are the only two, PayPal or Payoneer. Now, I already entered my PayPal email here. If you didn't, you're going to have to just enter your PayPal email here and then verify it and click on the button, it's gonna say something like verify PayPal. Once you do that, you should receive a confirmation email to your Teespring email. So not your PayPal email, you're gonna get a confirmation to your Teespring email saying, hey, click here to confirm your PayPal email. As you can see, this is a bogus email, this email doesn't exist, but because I confirmed it with my Teespring email, I was able to get it up here. Now I have a few frequently asked questions that I got a lot of on my other videos. One of them is, hey, I can't find the email anywhere. So first of all, make sure you're checking your Teespring email, not the PayPal email. 
Second of all, check all your folders, your spam folder, your socials folder, your promotions folder. There's a bunch of different folders, a bunch of places the email could be. Make sure you check it everywhere. When I sent the email to myself, I got it in the first few seconds and it looked something like this, okay? So I got the email, it was in my inbox, wasn't in spam or anything, it was right there and then super easy to confirm. If you still don't get it, just click the little option here, it's gonna say resend email, resend it and check it everywhere again. If you still don't get it, guys, contact support, support at teespring.com and just make sure that, you know, everything's right because you should receive it right away. Another question I always get is, do I need a personal or a business account? And the answer is it doesn't matter. Any PayPal account is fine. Whatever account you want the money to go into, that's the account you need. It can be personal or it can be business. Doesn't matter. Another question I keep getting is what PayPal email do I use? The PayPal email I use to sign in or the one that is associated with my account? It's one and the same. The PayPal email you use to log into your PayPal account is the email that is associated with your PayPal. So now we're able to finally start promoting once you do that. So we're gonna scroll up now and click on start designing. And we're just gonna fill in the blanks here, really. So you can select any of the product here. As you can see now, they even have masks, which they're selling and you can go to apparel, right? Any of these products you can choose, guys. So you have a ton of different selections, like even iPhone cases, that's pretty cool. But we're gonna go with something simple and we're just gonna select shirts, right? And we're gonna go with classic t-shirt and it's gonna ask you whether you wanna buy or sell it. We will, of course, we wanna sell it. We're not doing the shirt to buy for us, we're doing the shirt to sell. So this is where we actually create the design. You have the front here and you have the back. And you can also add colors here, which we'll get to, let's go from top to bottom. So you can add an image by uploading it or you can add text. So if you add text, you can go in and just play around with this. You can say this is text. Uh, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can adjust, you know, you can change the color here, make it bold, not bold, if I want to make that bold. Uh, if I want to change the font uh, style, you know, I can add it here. So you can use this if you want. What I would probably do is I would go into Photoshop or Canva and I would create a custom kind of design with custom font, custom, you know, style, and then I would just upload it here. But you can use this if you don't have anything and if you just want a super simple shirt sure design, you know, you don't want anything fancy adding text is, is probably the way to go here. But I'm gonna delete this and what I'm gonna do is I already created a design, so I'm just gonna click on add image and it's gonna ask me to select the file and I'm just gonna upload it here because I've already created it. A few moments later. All right, so I went ahead and added my image. As you can see, it looks like this. Education is important, but soccer is importanter. Uh, you know, I just pulled up this idea from Google. It's I didn't come up with it. I wish I did, it's, it's really cool but I just pulled this up, okay? So we can go in and kind of center it, you know, align it, uh, make it bigger, make it smaller. Now, if you do these designs, guys, when I made this in 1000 by 1000 pixel dimensions, um, and I tried to make this bigger, it said image quality poor, and it wouldn't allow me to save. So what you wanna do is make sure that your image here is as high quality as possible. So this is, I believe, 1500 by 1500. So that should be probably the minimum that you should aim for, because otherwise, Teespring will only allow a small image. And that's awesome if that floats your boat, but if you want something bigger, then you should aim for higher dimensions, like at least 1500 by 1500, like I said. So we're gonna put this maybe something like that, and that's it for our design, okay? So I'm happy with this. We don't want anything in the back. Let's suppose this is gonna be our design. The next thing we can choose is the color. So the shirt color, I'm gonna click on the little plus sign here, and we can select our colors. So we have blue, we have dark blue, we have black. Now obviously the dark colors won't work here because our text is in black. Although you can create another shirt design, you can make the text white and then you can have these black shirts or these dar or darker color shirts like this dark blue. But we can go in and just select some light colors like maybe pink looks okay, you know, this looks okay, light pink, gray, you know, any of the light colors are okay. This is pretty bright, uh, but this is just an example. Uh, that is kind of cutting it close. Maybe orange looks okay, all right? Now once you're done, you select done, and then you can see all the colors here on the right-hand side. Now you can select here, so view on, what is the first image that people see? Is it the white shirt or is it a different color? So you can click on edit, and then you can select which color you want people to see first. So if it's blue, for example, when someone clicks on your Teespring link, once we publish it, they will see this green, sorry, not blue they're gonna see this green listing. But we're gonna go with white, that's the most basic, you know, easiest to see here. 
and we're just gonna leave it at that. The next thing we're gonna do is add the price. So this price is in US dollars. It's telling us that, you know, with a price of $25 for this shirt, uh, in the US, by the way, this is US and then this is Europe, uh, we're gonna be making about $14 worth of profit. So obviously the higher you set the price, the uh, higher the profit, but then the harder it is to sell. And the lower the price, you make it 15. You know, 15 bucks, pretty cheap, but now you're only making four bucks per profit. So once we start running ads, we have to spend less than the $4.43 for this campaign to be profitable, okay? So you're kind of cutting it really close with $25. As long as we spend less than $14 for our ads to make a sale, you know, this campaign is going to be profitable. So that's the idea. This is US and this is for Europe. You do the same thing. You select uh, European money, your European pounds, I think, and then uh, Great British pounds. And then you just do, you do the, the same thing here. So you select the price. It, it tells you the profit. We're going to go with 25. You know, that's the average. Uh, it says here that most creators price this product at 25. You can do the research, go into Teespring, see what others are doing, see what the shirts in your area are, are being sold for, see how much people are willing to spend on a shirt. 25 is the average, so we're going to keep it at that. Now we're just going to click on continue here and we can add additional products. So if we want to, for example, add a hoodie. So when someone clicks on our shirt, on our link, they will also see the option to get a hoodie. So if we click here, click on select styles, let's suppose, you know, we like this option here and that's about it. This kind of looks scuffed, but we can change that. Uh, we'll click done, you know, let's suppose we want socks or we want uh, these leggings. You just repeat the same process and you add it. So for example, here, long sleeve tees, we can select that here. You can edit this. So if you're saying, okay, well, this looks weird. Let's drag this a little bit higher. You can do that then click on continue. And then, you know, it's going to take you back where you were. You'll click done and that is it. Okay. So you select your products here. Let's go to the next step. Let's click on continue. Now, an important note, which I probably should have mentioned earlier, when you select the colors, guys, you can't change it after you publish the campaign. So you can go back here, you can change the colors here, but once you publish it, you can no longer change this. Okay. So it's important that you set all the colors you want. You add the correct image, you align it as perfectly as you can, because in order for you to make something different, you will have to create a whole new campaign. Okay. The only thing you can edit though, is this part here. So the title, the description, the price and the URL, you can change that. So let's go into name here, for example, and let's add a name. So the idea here is we have to be creative. Now the shirt design here is going to speak for itself. Like this is a pretty cool, I think this is a pretty funny shirt, but what you want to do is kind of make sure to keep people in there and to get them interested to actually buy. Right? So just make something catchy. So maybe something simple, let's say love soccer, or maybe let's do capitals. Uh, now the limit here is 40 characters. So you can't make a title super long, but you can in the description. So let's say love soccer. Um, this shirt is for you and that is almost 40. And then in the description, you can take a look again, head over to teespring.com, look at other shirts and see what they're doing. Generally over here, you want to just provide a little bit, um, a little bit of a description about what this means and then tell people, Hey, buy this. Now we have a special offer. We have a discount, all that stuff. Okay. So in the description, we can say education is awesome, but soccer is awesomer you know, get this shirt now for you or your soccer lover friends. Okay. And then we can say, um, exclusive 15% off discounted now until today is the 22nd. So maybe we can say until 26th of October. So get it now. And then we will actually create this offer. I will show you how to create the promotion when we get there but we're just gonna leave it here like uh, like this for now and then we'll add the promo code. So don't worry, we'll get there. And let's say buy multiple shirts or buy multiple products to save on shipping and handling because they will, right? If they just buy 10 shirts at once, they only pay the shipping cost for just the one time, not for many different ones. So you're basically just kind of enticing them a little bit more. Um, click on, I believe it's buy now or order now, something like that. Click on buy now to order yours today. Okay. So this is just a basic idea. You guys can go in and obviously change it however you want to. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like this isn't your sales copy. The shirt speaks for itself. So unlike say Google search ads, where everything is in the text, there's no images here. 
people are attracted to the image. That's the most important thing. So over here, you wanna mention any special discounts, any bonuses, anything like that to actually get them to click the button. So in this case, we have this 15% uh, exclusive discount. So that is awesome, right? We're, we're kind of getting people to buy right now. And then over here, again, we're gonna select the color. So the front view is gonna be on white. And then here we're gonna add the URL. So we're gonna create our URL. It's gonna be teespring.com slash whatever we put here. So love shocker, this shirt is for. So that probably doesn't look that good. Let's say, uh, let's say soccer, soccer is important. And it's gonna tell you if it's available or not. Looks like it is. And then we can make this listing public, private, or um, unlisted. So if it's public, obviously anybody can see it. If it's private, means nobody can see it. And if it's unlisted, that means people can see it if they have the URL. All right. So we'll select public. We should be good to go here and let's click on publish listing. A few moments later. Now, if you haven't entered your payout details, it might prompt you to do so. So you might see a little box pop up that says, Hey, before we can publish this, enter your payout details, just click the link in there. It's going to open a new tab. Enter your payment details, verify it, come back, and then resave it. And you should see an option that looks like this. Now, obviously, we wanted to promote the shirt, right? Not the hoodie. So we're going to have to go in there and just make a slight edit to make sure that this shirt shows up first as opposed to the hoodie. So once we do that, we can head back over here and click on listings. Okay, so in the top right, that's our email. Click on listings. And what we're going to do here now is we can click on edit and then if you wanted to edit your description or your title this is where you do it here okay so the br stands for space it's like a line break so it adds the you know space and enter don't worry about that but you can just change it here and if you remove the line breaks you can delete them and just add it in spaces and it's it's gonna work fine okay so don't freak out about the brs there you can change the currency for eu products here you can change the url and then this is where we set the default right so we want our default to be the classic t not the hoodie and we can just go back in here make sure the prices are all good looks good let's hit save and now our classic t is going to be at the forefront which is what we want so we'll click save wait for it to um, load let's view the changes and just make sure that it's working fine and then there you go we have our shirt and we can select our colors and people have the option to select a different product so if they can promote or you know you can sell the hoodie or the long sleeve tee so that being said let's head back over into home and uh, let's click on listings maybe and that should be it for our product okay so let's head back over into powerpoint so congratulations we have successfully created our product so i'm gonna put a little plus sign here and now what we want to do is let's go in and create a Google Ads account. So we have to be able to promote it somewhere, right? So in order to uh, run our ads on Google Display, we have to create a Google Ads account. So what you want to do is head over to ads.google.com and you will be redirected to the page depending on your location. In my case, it's Canada. So it says International Canada. Okay, uh, so just type in ads.google.com. If you don't have an account yet, click on Start Now. And you're just going to have to fill in the blanks, enter your email, enter your name, maybe your birthday, things like that. Just fill in some blanks. You don't need a Gmail account for this to work. I use a G Suite account and I suggest using some form of Gmail account, whether it's G Suite or just a regular Gmail, because it will make it easier for you to switch between analytics and Google Tag Manager. But it really isn't necessary and you will be just fine with a regular non Gmail account. So whatever email you use, click on start now, enter the email, fill in the blanks. And ultimately, you should land on a page that looks like this after you fill all that in. Now, do not select any of these options. Do not select next. All right. This is important, guys, because if you select these, Google will take you to Google AdWords Express and they take away a lot of options from you, a lot of customization options. You know, I'd love to know somebody. I'd love to know some big spenders that are making big money with Google Ads Express. Let me know in the comments if you know anybody, but they're taking away so many options that it's really not worth it. They're trying to make it easy for beginners. But first of all, again, they're taking away so many options. Second of all, guys, I'm here. I'm going to show you how to do everything in this video. And I also have training courses. I have Google Ads courses and I have Google Ads videos that show you exactly how to set everything up. So learn how to use it in expert mode now. Don't go to AdWords Express. It's going to be a waste of money. So we're just going to click on expert mode right here. And you should see this option then to start creating your campaign. We're not ready to create the campaign yet. So click on create an account without a campaign. All right. We're not ready yet. 
So you will see a page that looks something like this. Now, obviously you will not have the campaigns here. Uh, you know, it's part of my job to teach people and show them how to do stuff. That's why I have a bunch of different campaigns here, but you will see a page that looks like this and it's going to be blank. Okay. And that's all you need. We can close out of that and congratulations. We have set up our Google ads account. Again, let me know in the comments, guys, if you're not following or if something's off, you need me to go and check. I try to be responsive to my comments. Um, so, you know, I'm always there if you need help. So now that we've done that, we have to set up Google ads tracking. All right, so we have to be able to see in Google Ads whether we got Teespring sales or not. Now, just as a heads up, I haven't actually tried this myself. I'm only following the documentation that Teespring provided for how to do this, all right? So we're gonna head over into Tools and Settings and we're gonna click on Conversions. Now, again, you see some conversions here. In my case, in your case, you will not. So don't worry about that. Just click on the little plus sign or in your case, it might be a little plus smack dab in the middle of that page. Click on Website. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a purchase conversion and add it into Teespring. So select purchase here. We're gonna say, for example, purchase, you know, you can enter whatever you want. This is gonna be your kind of pixel. This is gonna be the one pixel that you're gonna add. You can't add multiple, you're just gonna add it once. So purchase Teespring is probably a suitable name for this. And then we can say, you know, it's gonna be, thing is, you, you will probably have dynamic values. You will need a programmer though to set up uh, dynamic conversion. So if you have a programmer, someone you're working with, check with them how to set that up. In our case, let's suppose we don't, we're going to use the same value for each conversion. So let's suppose our profit is, let's say $14, right? That's what the profit, um, that's what Teespring told us the profit would be for that shirt. So we'll just say $14 here. And by the way, it's in US dollars and this is Canadian 14. So that's okay. We're going to leave it at that. But if you want to change it up, you just click here and you select, for example, um, US dollar right there. Okay. And it's going to convert it into Canadian. If you have a Canadian account, uh, next we're going to say, we want to count every conversion. So, um, if one person buys our shirt, our hoodie, our, you know, um, what else we have there? Sweatpants, uh, it's going to count every single one of them, as opposed to that one person counting just the one, right? Cause we want to, we want to make it accurate. So if someone bought three products, we want to say that we, well, we made money for all three of them. Uh, everything else we can leave here as is view through conversions, click through conversions, leave it at 30 days, leave it at one day. We want to include this in conversions column and I'll show you where to add that in a second. And attribution model, we're going to leave it at last click for now. Although if you select here, um, you know, I can go into more thorough detail what you want, but we'll just click on last click for now and we'll click on create and continue. Now what we're going to do is you can install the tag yourself. You can of course email it, but I'm going to show you how to do it here. The easiest thing to do is just select this option here, Google Tag Manager. You don't need to have Google Tag Manager, but we'll just click on here and we're going to take the values that Google provides us. Okay. Again, you don't need Google Tag Manager for this, but just select use Google Tag Manager. And what we have to do is paste these two values into Teespring. So let's head back over into Teespring. We're going to click on tools and services and we'll click on tracking pixels. We have to find Google here and we're going to add our labels here. So AdWords conversion pixel. So let's go back into Google. So this is the conversion ID. And then this is the conversion label, right? AdWords label. So we're going to go in and we're going to copy this ID. So this is our pixel ID. We're going to paste it here. We'll come back here. Conversion label. We're going to paste it here. Now we're not using Google analytics. So don't worry about that. If you are, you just enter the Google analytics code there. It's going to be like UET or something like that. Uh, dash, whatever number you just enter that here. So we'll click on update and just make sure it's saved. Okay. Let's go back and just double check. We'll go into tracking pixels. We're going to go into Google and we see everything set up here. All right. So, so far we're good to go. Now, for those of you that are more curious, we can also check and just make sure this is added to our page. So if we go back to listings, and now if we open this, uh, I'm going to open this in a new tab. So I'm going to click on, uh, I'm going to right click and I'll click on view page source. I'm going to control F and what I'm going to do here is let's find and see if this ID is anywhere on the page. So we're going to go back here. I'm going to paste that and lo and behold, it is right. So Teespring automatically, once you give them the IDs, they automatically set it up and add the ID and the conversion label to this page. And here is our conversion label, I believe. A3, yeah, A3, A ends in AC, yeah. So here everything is, right? And it's gonna be considered a purchase if someone buys. And then that's just how you quickly check, make sure it's on the page. Again, I haven't actually tested this myself, but this is what their documentation is telling us to do, okay? So 
Now that we've done that, let's head back over into our PowerPoint and put a little plus sign here. So we have correctly set up, according to the documentation, the Google Ads tracking. So we should be able to see everything in Google. So actually, let me quickly show you if I go here into the Google Ads account. Let's click next. Let's click done. Let me quickly show you how to add the columns so you can actually see the sales because you have to add the sales column. So to add the columns, all you're going to do is click here on columns. All right. And you will click on modify columns and you will look for conversions and make sure that these are checked. So in my case, they are for you. If they are not, make sure to check them. OK, and then have them added to your column list. Now, you might have to do this at the campaign level, at the ad group level, at the keyword level. Well, not keywords, but the audience level. So we'll get to that. But this is where you would go. So you would go into columns and then you'll be able to see your conversions right here. OK, so that's the cost per conversion. And then here are the actual conversions. And then this is how we'll be able to see everything. OK, so we're good with this part. So now let's go in and create a limited time offer and promotion code. So we said in our description that we have a 15 percent off discount, right? So let's go back into Teespring here. What we're going to do is click on tools and services and click on promotions. And first, let's create the promotion code. And then we're going to go in and actually say that this promotion ends on the 16th. So we can either make the promotion end on the 16th or we can say that the entire offer ends on the 16th. OK, either one's fine. But over here, we would enter a promo code. So, for example, uh, let's say soccer is our code. And this will probably turn all caps in a second. You can also randomize it by just clicking this option here. Um, but we'll click soccer. Uh, let's do a discount. So you can also do a free shipping or you can do a dollar or a percentage discount, whichever one works for you. In our case, we want to make a percentage discount and we're going to type in one five. Now, if you click on add discount and it says, you know, not available, can't do it. That means your profit margins are too low. So, for example, if you're adding a $70 discount on a $30 shirt, that's impossible. Can't happen. So that's an extreme example. But if you're adding a $30 discount on a $40 shirt, you're not going to make any money. Teespring's not going to make any money. So they say, sorry, you can't add this discount. So if you get some sort of error when you add a discount, that's why. OK, so just make sure that the discount is suitable to the price that you're promoting it at. So we're going to say 15 expiration. We said the 26th and we'll click add discount and here. Yeah, so it became all caps now. So the way we activate this is let's go into listings. I will show you how to actually use this. So here's our product, right? So let's open in a new tab. So our product URL is this, right? Soccer is important. So you can disregard this. Let's just take this part right here. So I'm going to go in and let's copy it. Let's delete that. Let's paste it. And then to the end of this, we want to say question mark PR equals and our code capitals soccer. And now let's click enter. And now we should see a little discount here, a little pop up in a second here. Cha Ching, you get 15 percent off your purchase. OK, so that's just how it works. Now, that's one way of using the discount. Another way is you don't actually have to add PR soccer. You can. But what you could do is in your ad copy, you can say, hey, enter promo code soccer, right? In, in Quotation marks, enter promo code soccer and you're going to get a discount. And then when you go to add to cart, um, let's say go to cart, you will have the option here. Let's proceed to checkout. Uh, people are going to have the option here to enter the actual code. So over here, I have a promo code. And in this case, our promo code uh, was already added, right? It's already saved now to our cookies. But normally, if you don't enter the promo code like we did, you click on I have a promo code and you're going to add it right there, which in this case, it's added automatically. So that's the second option of doing it. OK, now the next thing we could do is set an actual deadline for the product, not just the promotion. So we can click on this little gear icon here, click on settings. And then over here, you can set the end date for your actual product. So your product right now, it, it, it's live forever, but you can set an end date. And that way, there's going to be a little timer that's going to appear for the product. So that adds a little exclusivity bonus. So, for example, if we say that the product is going to completely expire on the 26th, not just the discount, then we can say, you know, this is going to expire um, at 12 p.m. on the 26th. And then time zone, we can select, let's say, Eastern time and we'll click save and date. And in this case, looks like we can't do it because we already had our orders placed. So let's quickly go in. Um, let's remove the order just so I can show you what it's going to look like. But it's going to have a cool little timer. OK, so let's open this up. And under our, our account, it's we already have the uh, it's added to cart. So let's go in here and let's remove this. So we want to um, say remove. 
And now let's try it again. Let's click save end date. And now our product is gonna expire on at, at 12 p.m. on the 26th. Now, if you wanna remove that, you click there and you select cancel end date, okay? That's what you wanna do. Click on cancel, don't click end immediately. End immediately will terminate the campaign right now. Okay, so you don't want that. You wanna click on cancel end date if that's what you want. But we'll click save. And then if we select our product again, if we go here, now you should see a timer. It's gonna say how long is left until this expires right here, okay? So adds a little, again, exclusivity saying hurry up, right? So now no longer is there a 50% discount until the 26th, but there's but the, the product is also going away, okay? So you're adding a little push to get people to buy. So we've done that. We've created our promo code called soccer. Let's close out of all that. And let's head back into our handy dandy PowerPoint and let's put a little plus sign here. So we have now created a limited time discount and a promo code. So now what we have to do is create a good looking image, right? We wanna entice people to buy. So we can't just take our image and post it. I mean, we can, but ideally we want to add a little bit of spice to it when I get a little bit more attention. Just like, you know, if you've seen my Facebook ads and Teespring video, we wanna make it presentable. So let's head back over into listings. And then what I'll be using, the tool I will be using to create the design is called Canva. You can try out your free, you can sign up for your free account at go. Uh, ivanmana.com slash canva but you can use anything you want power uh, uh yeah i think powerpoint you can even use you can use photoshop anything to make uh, a good looking kind of design that we can then upload into google ads you can use that okay so what we want to do here is let's open this in a new tab and we are going to be pasting we're going to be uh, copying this image and we're going to be pasting it back into canva so here I am in my Canva account. Again, you can sign up for your free account at go.ivanmana.com slash Canva. It's my affiliate link, but I don't suggest anything I don't use myself. So what we wanna do here is, as you can see, we've already created some designs in the previous video. We wanna create certain dimensions. So for Google Display Ads, we need dimensions with one to one ratio and dimensions with almost two to one ratio. So what we can do here is we can type Facebook ad and if we hover over this, it tells us 1200 by 628 pixels. And this is the exact dimensions that Facebook and Google Display Ad requires because it's 1.9 to one, which is almost two to one. So that's right there. This is almost two to one. So we'll click there. And what we're gonna do here is create our design. So we'll click on create a blank Facebook ad and we're gonna paste our shirt here. And then we're gonna add a little message. Now, what you could also do is maybe, you know, add some shirts here on the side as well, since we have room. We're not gonna do that here, but however you wanna be creative, you can, okay? So let's head back into our product here. What I'm gonna do is right click that. I will copy image address. I'm gonna paste it in a new tab and here it is. Okay, so we're gonna be copying that. Now I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna make it 1000 by 1000 so it's bigger and so it looks nicer. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and save this image and then we're gonna upload it into Canva. All right, so I went ahead and clicked Save Image As and it, it got added right here to our uh, Chrome. Now we can go back in here and we're gonna click on Uploads and we're gonna go in and drag this right in here. And as you can see, some images I use for my thumbnails. Uh, and then we're gonna go in and we can just move it here. And now we can go in and make this a little bigger, maybe something like this. Now there is a background, as you can see here, it's gray background, we probably don't want that, right? So we can click here, we can click on Effects we can click on background remover. And now it's gonna remove that background so that our shirt has, you know, uh, has a white background that we can use. Then what we can do is we can select this option here. Let's go here and let's add a color to it. Maybe like a yellow, right? Again, we're trying to get attention and we can maybe drag this a little bit here and that is it. So we can make sure it's centered. We are gonna wait for the little uh, purple line there. And right there, it is smack dab centered in the middle, okay? So this is gonna be our design, uh, adding a little bit of yellow. Now, keep in mind with Google Display Ads, your ads are gonna show up on mil potentially millions of websites, millions of YouTube channels. So the website could be could have a yellow background, in, in which case this will not stand out. But the idea is you wanna make it stand out. You wanna make it, you know, make it enticing to people. So like I said, with Google Display, you do need two dimensions. You need a one by one and you need a two by one. So right now we're doing a two by one. Um, what you could do because there's room is move this to the left and then add some images here. So you can add the hoodie that you have and uh, the long T that we had, right? You can add them here, add images as well. Now, 
For the purpose of this video, just to save time, I'm gonna do just the 2x1 and we'll use this 2x1, we'll crop it and we'll make it a 1x1 when we actually create the ads in Google. But this is basically what you ideally want to do. So now we're gonna add a little bit of text here at the bottom, maybe say it's a limited time offer. Also, we can maybe add a little image here that says limited time offer, right? So let's head over and click on elements and we're gonna add a little box here. So we'll click that. We're gonna drag it here and we're gonna move it here and move it down, maybe like that. And we'll click on text and we're gonna add add a text here and here we just want to we just want to say right we just want to say hey uh, let's expand this a little bit let's say exclusive oops exclusive 15% off discount till let's say until we'll probably have to make the font uh, the size a bit smaller until we said October 26th okay so we're gonna select all that gonna head over here and just make it maybe 36 that's okay I'm gonna use the, the numpad to or not the numpad but the up and down arrows to kind of just move it around here and that looks about right now I don't like this gray so let's go in here and maybe make it red okay um, maybe we can make this white so we're gonna select that and let's select a white background here for a white uh, font size and that you know something like that um, just a little, you know, bright colors to get a little bit of attention. Now that looks a little too bright, maybe make it more pinkish or something. We can go in here and we can play around with the colors as well. So maybe something like dark red doesn't look as bright. So we can maybe leave it at that. And then again, you can make your design however you want to, right? I don't have much artistic skill. I'll be honest, I'm not a designer by nature. Uh, but if you have someone or if you're good at it, play around guys, take your time to do it. Now, one thing we could also do is if we just type in or head over to google.com actually not google let's uh let's go to so we have two free image websites we have pixels and pixabay and then over here we could say you know 15 percent discount uh, that's a bad request i don't know why so these are free image websites that I use and we can try to see if we can get an image for free. Okay, let's head over to Google and let's type in here 15% discount. Now, be careful guys, you wanna make sure the image is free, okay? Because you don't wanna pay. Like this one, you have to pay for it. You can't just copy this and use it. This is a great image, you can't. You have to pay for it, Shutterstock can find you, you know, it's not, not good. Uh, this one looks like you have to pay. So what we wanna do is see if we can find something for free, like this one, we're gonna click on this site and let's just see if it's free. Uh, download now for free. Okay, so this one looks like it's free. It's stick PNG, it's not Shutterstock. Uh, for personal use only, for commercial use, it's not allowed. Okay, so this will not be allowed for commercial use, like you can't sell it. Uh, for the purpose of this video and as an example, I can show you what this looks like. So we can click on download and we're gonna give it a second. It says your uh, download will begin automatically. And then it should be added here and we can add it to our ad. I just wanna show you what it's gonna look like. So if we come back here, we can now drag it here. And you know, we can add this somewhere. So now what, what I did um, when I was, you know, promoting Teespring products, what I would do is I would buy an image. So I would actually like buy like a, hey, exclusive limited time discount uh, thing from Shutterstock and it would, it would just look nice. But whatever you wanna do, uh, maybe, you know, if you're um, serious about Teespring, you can invest like five to 10 bucks for an image like that. And then you can just use it. Yeah, so something like that, you know, it doesn't look, I'll be honest, it probably doesn't look too good here, uh, just because we already have it here. Uh, but that's what you would do. So if you want to add something like that, that's how you would go about it. So you can actually probably delete it. So that's the process. So let's close out of that. We can close out of that. So this is going to be our design we're going to use. Now this is a two by one. So you know, one by one is gonna look, once we crop it, it's gonna look something like that, okay? So actually, uh, we should probably create a one by one as well, just so this fits. I thought we could crop it, but yeah, th that's not gonna fit. So what we can do is let's go in and click resize, and we're gonna select a one by one, so we can select, you know, 1200 by 1200, and then we're gonna copy and resize, and this way we still have it here. And then over here we have everything, so let's go in and just play around with this a little bit. I'm going to select both of these, drag them down, and let's add that, something like this, okay? 
And this is going to be our one by one. So again, we need both. So now we can go in and I mean, that's pretty small. Sometimes this will not even be seen uh, depending on the image size and how much space there is. Sometimes this bottom part will not be seen. But if it does, then, you know, it's at least going to let people know. So maybe in this case, we want to add something like this here somewhere. You know, in this case, maybe we want to add that. So we can keep it at that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click download and let's, uh, we don't need a transparent background. So we're just going to click download here. We're going to give it a second. We're going to head back to the other one. We're going to click download here and we don't need a transparent background. We're going to do that. And now we have everything added here. So we've created our designs. We've created a two by one and a one by one. So now what we can do is let's head over into PowerPoint. Let's add a little plus sign. Now what we have to do is promote on Google Display. So the moment we've all been waiting for, right? Let's actually show our ads to billions of people worldwide. So let's head back over into our Google Ads account. And again, you'll see a blank screen, but that's okay. So click on the little plus sign here, click on new campaign, and let's go through this step by step. So what you want to do is select website traffic. We don't have any conversion data set up yet, or we have it set up, but we don't have any actual data. So we'll select website traffic for now. Next, we're going to click on display. And then here we're going to select our business website. We can select the standard display campaign. Uh, doesn't matter here. And let's go back into our option here. So we said this was our offer, right? So let's go ahead and copy this part. I'm going to copy it, come back here, paste it here. And then we want to say question mark PR equals soccer, right? So this was our URL. Let's click on continue. And now we are just going to go from top to bottom. We're going to fill in the blank. So the campaign name, let's name this Teespring uh, Soccer. Okay. Uh, for location, you can enter locations here. So people, we want to select people in or regularly in your target locations. Don't select this first option. This first option means, for example, if I have Canada enabled, if someone searches for soccer shirts in Canada, our ad's going to show there. So we don't want that, right? We only want people in specifically in Canada. So you want to select this. Um, not so much, uh, not so much relevant for display ads as opposed to search ads, but still you get the idea. So we'll select add another location. Let's select, you know, let's say United States and let's enter the top, the, uh, tier one country. So Canada, us, Australia, United Kingdom and New Zealand, click enter. And we are good to go here. We've selected all that languages. We'll leave as English. They're all English speaking countries. Over here for bidding, uh, so that's what I meant. So we can add conversions later on. It's not that we're not gonna get sales, we will, but it's more Google optimizes to show our ads most likely to people that convert, but we don't have any conversion data yet, so they don't have any data to go with. So we could select for now, manual CPC here, and we're just gonna enter a bid. So we're gonna say, how much are we willing to pay per click? Okay, so this way we're able to set a maximum per click we're willing to spend. So as of right now, we're getting, you know, we're going to get 10 billion impressions. Of course, we didn't select any targeting yet. Uh, let's select our budget. Let's say $20. There is no right answer. Some of you asking how much should I set? The more you spend, the more data you get as simple as that. Okay. So there's no right answer. The minimum is $1, but if you do that, you're probably not going to get a lot of data. So as of right now, without any targeting, we're going to get about 200 to 500 clicks uh, per day. Okay. So that's huge. That's a lot of clicks. Okay. A lot of people seeing our shirts. Uh, you can go on into additional settings. Now I do have videos guys um, and I have courses at evonmana.com slash old dash courses that go into this in very thorough detail. So check those out if you want. In this video, I'm just going to kind of breeze through the most important things. Um, but if you want to know more details about like all these options, what everything means, how to set everything up from start to finish, uh, definitely check those courses out. So we're going to scroll down. Now we have to add an ad group name here. We're going to add the ad group after we set the targeting, okay? Because we want the ad group to uh, reflect what our targeting is. So we're going to leave that for now and let's go in and choose our targeting and then we'll come back. So with Google display ads, you have two options here. You can target specific people regardless of website. So specific people based on their interests, based on their uh, willingness to buy something right now, based on their life situation, like they just got married or their age. And you can select by targeting. So you can put your ads on specific websites, on soccer websites, on uh, soccer YouTube channels, anything like that. Okay. So you have two options. You can mix them. You can match them, whatever you want to do. Uh, let's just go through the list and I'll explain to you how this works, what this looks like. So the first thing you can do is if you can't find something you want, you can just type it in here. So if we type soccer in here, we'll get some suggestions from Google. Okay. So that's kind of our last resort. 
You can also click on ideas and based on our website and our advertiser history, Google is going to suggest certain, um, certain kind of areas for us to target. So health and fitness buffs, that's kind of relevant, right? People that play soccer are, some of them are doing it to stay fit. So we can, you know, maybe select this option, sports and fitness, pretty relevant. But when you hit browse, this is where you actually select what you want. So the first option here is uh, demographic. So you can enter based on parental status, like if they're parents, if they're, you know, they have teens, they have infants, anything like that. You can enter based on marital status, if they're married in a relationship. You can enter based on education, based on home ownership status. So it doesn't really apply here, probably for our soccer product, but you can see how this would apply for some other products, like a Valentine's Day shirt. Maybe you wanna, uh, you know, promote it to people in a relationship or that are married, or maybe that are single whatever you want, however you wanna do it. But this is the detailed demographics here. Next, you have interests. So if you click on affinity audiences, you can choose this is, uh, these are gonna be people that Google deems are interested in the topic. So for example, we're looking for something soccer related. So we're gonna look for the sports and fitness category. We're gonna click the little down arrow. We're gonna click sports fans, and we're gonna look for soccer. Now, in this case, there is no soccer here because I believe they refer to soccer here as football. So they have American football and then they have football, which is like soccer. So in our case, soccer is, we're going to say football here. So if we select this option, we're going to be targeting people that Google deems has an interest in soccer, regardless of what website they go to. So these people could go to a website on Teletubbies and they're going to see our ad because we're not targeting websites. We're targeting people that Google deems is interested in soccer. So this is how this people targeting works, okay? That's up to you, there's no right answer. With display, there's so many options, it's up to you to test it and see what works. So you can select football fans here, that's probably the most relevant thing here. Under affinity audiences, you can maybe, you know, select health and fitness buffs maybe, up to you. Uh, we're still targeting 10 billion people, our range is huge. Um, but let's go back, so that's affinity. You can enter in market. So these are people that specifically have been searching for something related to a specific topic, so something to buy. For example, Google noticed that people in the past month have been searching for cars. They've been looking at car comparison websites and shopping around. That's what in market means. So maybe you wanna target people that have actively been searching for something to do with sports. So let's see what they have here. Let's say maybe sporting goods and not much here. Let's say outdoor. Yeah, so it looks like there's not much of sports stuff, maybe fitness class, personal training kind of, maybe exercise equipment. So these are people that specifically have been looking for, like for example, uh, gyms and athletic clubs. They have been, you know, here it says, people interested in joining gyms. So you're gonna be targeting people that Google says has been looking, actively shopping for which gyms to go to, okay? You'll be showing your ass to them regardless of which website they go to. So that's kind of the idea here. So that's uh, for the in-market and life events. Now, another thing I didn't go over is life events here at the bottom. So you could target people based on their marriage. So people that just got married. So if you hover over here, it says people who are about to get married or recently got married, uh, people that are moving. So people that are about to move or have recently moved, right? So lots of targeting options. Again, it's not really relevant for our shirt, but I'm sure a lot of you aren't gonna be making shirts only about soccer. So a lot of these options will probably apply to you. Uh, if you wanna make a shirt on like moving, hey, like I'm new here, maybe you wanna target movers, right? You get the idea. So there's that. Then you have remarketing audiences. Now we don't have remarketing audiences here. You'll be targeting audiences that you created. I do have a very detailed course covering remarketing, again, at evonmatta.com slash old dash courses, cover remarketing with Facebook and Google ads. Check that out. In this case, it doesn't really apply. We just have a new product. We don't have any audience yet. So there's no need for remarketing audiences yet. And then lastly here, you can create custom audiences. So these are audiences that you create yourself. You can click on custom audience and you can make an audience out of people that specifically searched for something in the past, say 30 days. So for example, we create an audience, you know, soccer fans, and we can say people with any of these interests. And then we select interests based on Google suggestions. So. Uh, soccer sports news. So now we're going to be targeting people that uh, have an interest in soccer sports news or people that searched for Google. I believe it's in the past 30 days or so. So people that search on Google for a variety of things. So for example, search for something to do with 
sports or football, okay? So people that searched for soccer sports news, sports news soccer, and football news soccer, we're gonna create a custom audience of these people and we're gonna be able to target them. And that's how this custom audience works. We don't have to do it here. You know, we're fine with just targeting football fans, but that's how this works. Now, we can click on done here. We're good here. We can select demographics. So we can select male, female, gender, you know, ages, parent, not a parent, all these options here, household income. So lots of options to work with. Probably not so relevant in our case, although maybe we don't want to target, you know, people that are 65 plus. I don't know how many of them play soccer. But maybe they do. For example, 18 to 24, you know, maybe 55, whatever. That's the idea. Uh, we'll just leave it as everything for now. Let's click done. And then we have content marketing. Okay, so right now we're reaching 10 billion people, but let's suppose we don't want to target it everywhere. We want to target our ads only on specific places, specific websites or YouTube channels or videos. So the first option here is keywords. If you select keywords, uh, you're gonna show your ads to people on websites or, or YouTube channels that Google determines has the keyword associated with it. So for example, if we say soccer, uh, let's say what suggestions we get. Well, let's enter soccer here and we'll click enter. And so relevance 99, so soccer match, US soccer, play soccer. So now we're gonna be showing our ads to, on websites that Google deems the keyword of that website, the theme of the website has to do with soccer or soccer match or play soccer, right? That's the idea. And then if you select content, uh, you will show our ads related only to these keywords. Now audience, we already selected an audience up here, so we don't have to check mark here, but we wanna select content, right? Because we wanna show our ads to apps, websites, or YouTube channels that fit this theme, soccer, okay? Now we can leave it as this, so we'll say done. And now, as you can see, our impressions went down. So now we're only targeting these websites associated with soccer and these people, okay? That's why our impressions go down, but now it's more tailored, it's more fine-tuned. Now we do have two more options. We can go by topic. So there's keyword, which is really, really specific, and then there's topic, which is more general. So we can select here, let's see if we can find sports. We can go with sports. Let's see if we can find, oh boy. Okay, there's a lot of sports here. Uh, Olympics, let's say team sports and we're gonna select football. So now we're gonna show our ads on any website that where the topic is soccer, right? Or football in this case. So we're selecting by topic, we're selecting by keyword. Now our impressions definitely went down because we're not targeting any one of these and or we're saying it has to match a football related topic, has to have one of these keywords associated with it and they have to be football fans, okay? So our number has gone down, but 170 million is still no joke. That's a lot of weekly impressions, all right? So that's what you would do here. This is basically, again, just topic, okay? Similar to keywords, but a bit more broad than keywords. Keywords are very specific and topics here are a bit more broad. So one other option you can do is if you go to placements, you can select exact websites and exact YouTube channels and videos where you wanna show your ads to. So really cool. So if you go to websites, uh, if you type in, I don't know, soccer.com. Yeah, so I don't know if that doesn't exist. Um, so like getsport.com. So like you can show your ads specifically on, let's see if that works. I'm just trying to get some ideas. Uh, specifically on, for example, jobsinfootball.com or DLS Kids or Sagi. So you can choose specific websites. So you would go in and you would type in and see if jobs in football and see if your uh, website that you want to promote is relevant. So jobsinfootball.com, let's see. Um, so this looks like, you know, it's a place that's hiring football people. So maybe you want to show it here or soccer people, maybe you want to show it there. Um, but that's the idea, right? So you go in, if you, if you are a regular visitor of certain soccer football websites and you're saying, wow, this, this would be a great website to promote on. That's what you would do. You would go in, you know, and you would enter that URL here and you're able to show your ads directly on that website. Really cool. Now, the other thing you can do is if you don't want to do websites, you can do YouTube channels or YouTube videos. So for example, uh, let's say YouTube channels, right? You can show your soccer ads on my channel. If you type in Ivan Mana, probably not the best thing, right? My audience might not be into soccer. I don't know how many of you guys are, but my channel is about online marketing. So you probably don't want to ch uh, put your soccer ads on my channel. But the idea is, let's see if we do find some soccer channels. Let's type soccer, enter. So here, you know, here's the channel with, with almost 5K subscribers. Here's one with 12 million. Okay, so maybe you wanna show it there. 12 billion subscribers, super, super broad. You'll probably get a wide spectrum of people there. 
Um, but that's on you to kind of go in, look at those channels and see if the people are dedicated to soccer, right? You can also choose specific videos. So here are some specific soccer videos. This one has 2 million views, right? So really awesome. You can target by apps uh, more so, you know, if you have something maybe to do with apps or maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe soccer apps, right? You can sell soccer shirts. That works too. Um, and then app categories as well. So you can just select, uh, let's say sports and you can select Google Store and you can select any sports related apps on uh, the Google Play Store ads are going to be shown there. Okay, so that's the idea. Now we don't want that. I don't want to limit it like this. Um, so we're going to clear all and I think we should be good. So let's click done. Uh, we are good here. Hopefully you have an idea of how to do this targeting. Okay, and what to select and we're going to create our ad and we're going to show it on all these places. So we're going to show it on websites that have a topic of soccer or football that have these specific themes of um, we said soccer soccer match play soccer u.s soccer and that are interested in or that are football fans as deemed by google okay so that's who we're targeting pretty you know pretty good start uh, i would probably make it a bit more narrower but you get the idea over here you can add additional people so google is gonna show your ad to more people that it's deems is closely related to your audience i don't want that i'm gonna click off and our numbers might go down here they might not nope they're fine. And then here's where we enter the bid. So a typical bid is 145. Now you can play around with this. So if you say $1.25, for example, it's going to tell you if you're going to get any clicks. Yeah. So our audience is pretty broad. So we're going to get 430 to 940 clicks uh, on average per week with an average CPC of about you know, 20, 25 cents. Again, there's no right answer for the bid. You can go in and you can uh, change it. If you're not getting enough clicks, you can go in and just get more clicks. If you're if you're getting way too many clicks and you're exceeding your budget in the first five minutes, maybe you wanna reduce the bid, okay? So play around with it. I would probably suggest starting low and then slowly increasing it as you go. Now, one thing we did forget to do is let's go in and change our ad group title, right? So we wanna, we wanna reflect what targeting we selected. So in this case, we, uh, we selected let's say football fans. We selected certain keywords, so soccer keywords maybe. We'll just say soccer keywords. And we selected uh, football topics, okay. So this is just an idea for how you would do this. There's no right answer. Basically, you wanna make it so that when you look at an ad group, right? Because later on, you're gonna be duplicating ad groups. You're gonna be split testing. You'll be testing and make sure what works, what doesn't. You want to easily be able to look at an ad group name and say what is contained within that ad group. So however you want to do it, I don't care. You want to make it clear to yourself what is contained in that ad group. If you have an extra age or like genders, you can say, you know, male 18 to 54, for example. And let's suppose this is who we're targeting. Now we don't have that, so I'm going to delete that, but that's what you would do. Make it clear what is contained in that ad group. So. We're done with that. Let's go down and now we have to actually create our ad, okay? So here's our final URL. We got the promo code. Uh, let's start off, let's go from top to bottom. Let's add some images. So we have to add a logo. Um, you can spend some time, create a logo or you can let Google scan your site and I believe it should find the Teespring logo. Uh, yeah, so we can use like a Teespring logo right here but it doesn't matter, so let's select that. And let's say this is gonna be our logo. Uh, we'll click select ratio. And then what we want to do is we want to add images, right? So Google has scanned our website here and it saw, you know, these images, but we've created images, right? We have the images here. So we're going to click on upload and we're going to drag this right here. And then we're going to drag that right there as well. All right. I forgot uh, dragging for some reason doesn't work. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do is just click on choose files to upload and I'm just going to add the files that we saved. All right. So I went ahead and added these files that seemed to work just fine. So we can select this option here. And as you can see, if we select one, one, we can just crop this, which is what I originally wanted to do, but I remembered that we can't actually really do it. So we're gonna deselect that uh, and we'll just do this 1.9 by one ratio. Okay, so we're gonna select that. And then we're gonna select this image as our one to one image and we'll click select. And the reason for this is because there are different sizes and dimensions which could be shown with Google Display. Remember, you're showing it across millions of sites and YouTube channels, so there's different spacing right allotted on each site and YouTube channel so this is why Google is asking for different variations of your images so that you can actually add them on okay so we're gonna click on save now you can add more images so you can add additional variations you're not limited to just two in this case we just created two and that's okay for now but you can add more I believe it's up to 10 
All right, now we don't have any videos, so let's go in and add our headline here. So for our headline, and let's close out of that, let's head back to our shirt and see what this is. So maybe we could say, love soccer, this shirt is for you. And we can add up to, nope, too long. Uh, love soccer, get this shirt now. Nope. Okay, so we can just leave it at that. We can add another headline here. So let's say for all you soccer fans. For example, let's say soccer fan, see this shirt or something, okay? And yeah, so we can do like that for all you soccer fans, right? So we're speaking directly to them. Uh, we can add a long headline. So this was our short headline. And then sometimes there is space for uh, a longer headline, which provides more detail. So here we can say maybe something like, education is important, but soccer is important. Education is important, but soccer is important. So maybe we can start off as well here. We can say love soccer. Education is important, but soccer is important. -er. And we can say, buy your shirt now, okay? And then for the description, we can add a little more detail. So we can say, uh, you know, here it's giving us suggestions based on what we added, but we can add descriptions uh, and just entice people to buy more. So we can say, limited time, 15% off discount until October, we said 26th. Get it now while supplies last. Okay, so something like that. Get your limited time soccer lover shirt for 15% off until October 26th, okay? So we can just do something like this and then this is what our shirt is gonna look like. So you see here, it's got different kind of options here, right? And if we go up now, we can go to desktop mode and just see everything at once. So here's what it's gonna look on desktop. And as you can see, that's the reason for why they ask for different sizes. Um, sometimes Google crops in this case, let's see. Let's see if there's other options where I could show you. Yes, sometimes there's no image. So that kind of sucks, but hopefully we attract their attention with, the, with our ad. Uh, let's see if we can go in here and click on image ads just to show you some examples of images. Yeah, but basically you get the idea. Sometimes images are one-to-one. -one. I don't know why it's not showing here. Um, like over here on mobile, you will see some one-to-one -one images. Let's go in here. No, why not? Let's see, key ad formats. I'm just trying to show you guys that all these images could be in completely different dimensions, and that's why we, we did it. I don't know why it doesn't show you here, but it does, okay? So like over here, you'll probably just see a one-by-one -one, uh, ratio, sure. Yeah, whatever, but it, it is there, okay? So different dimensions, uh, sucks you, you can't see, it, but that's okay. So for the business name, this is Teespring. So we're kind of promoting Teespring, but such is the name of the game if you're using Teespring to promote your products. Um, now, additional format options, you can leave this blank. You can leave add URL options blank as well. We are not using any tracking, like click magic tracking here. Uh, but if you go to more options, you can add a call to action text and a customized color. So over here, instead of just saying, you know, um, Close open, let me see where there's just a button. So over here, there's just a button. We're gonna try to make it say, and that's a small button, so not the best example. But we can say, for example, uh, learn more, uh, see more, for example, uh, learn more. I mean, there's nothing more to learn, so maybe see more so they could see additional options. And then sometimes uh, the button will actually say see more. So let's see if it shows. Yeah, so there's see more, okay? And we can also change the color. So what's the color of our shirt? Well, it's, it's really, in this case, there's not much, it's just white and black. So maybe we can leave it as is, and it's already, you know, the button's already pinkish based on our, our website. So it kind of takes the relevant color, uh, which is pink, and we can probably leave it at that. But what you can do here is change the colors. So if you select here and add FFFFF, I don't know what the, I don't know what the colors are. Uh, let's see if this one, 4285F4. Okay, so that's blue. Uh, so here we added blue and sometimes it will show blue for the button color, I believe. Let me see if I can show that to you guys. Yeah, no, come on. Here, okay, so that one is blue. And then if we go to desktop, you will see the blue button right there, okay? So sometimes it um, shows, sometimes it doesn't, but that's what we're doing here. So we can leave it at that. Uh, make sure everything here is good. Now the ad strength it's telling us is average. This doesn't mean you're not gonna get sales. 
It's just Google's way of saying, hey, you, you can't add more images, you can add more headlines, because you can, you can add up to five. Once you add 10 images, five headlines, five uh, descriptions, Google's gonna say excellent, but that doesn't mean the ad is strong enough. It just means Google has enough data to work with to split test the copies, because if you only add the two images, or it's it's really just one image, it's, it's one style, Google will not test much. It's just gonna use this one image. So it's not gonna be able to tell you what works better, what, what doesn't. So if you're tight on budget, like 10, $20 a day, I probably wouldn't put too much. Maybe three headlines, three descriptions is more than enough. Maybe two more images is good. So one image for the two by one and one image for the one by one ratio, that's good. But don't add any more than that because if you put too many, you know, for 20 bucks a day, there might not be enough clicks to alternate between all the different headlines, all the descriptions you have. So just keep an eye on your budget and just do something accordingly. For 20 bucks a day, I'd say four images is good. I'd say three headlines, three uh, descriptions is good. Uh, we have two here. We can just leave it at that. And let me just add that here. Yeah, two is fine. Uh, and let's go in and click on create campaign. We are good here. Make sure everything is fine. It's going to tell us if we forgot something anywhere. Yep, looks like we did. Uh, doesn't need guidelines. Okay, so what are the guidelines here? Let's click on more details. Uh, punctuation and symbols. Okay, so three uh, three double dots we can't have. Okay, so that's my bad. You can't have the three, three dots, but that's fine. And that is it. Looks like our campaign is ready. Let's click on continue to campaign. And here is our campaign. Now, let's go over a few more things just to show you the lay of the land. So first of all, I do have conversions here, but once again, you wanna go into columns and you want to go into conversions and make sure the conversions are there. We're going to click cancel. Now, this is our ad group. As you can see, it makes it crystal clear. Once you duplicate ad groups, you want to be able to tell what is what, right? So if you go into ads for this ad group, uh, let's go to ads. Uh, here you can edit the ad. So if you click on the little pencil icon, you'll be able to go in, change the headline, change descriptions, images, anything you want. Let's click cancel. But now let's suppose we want to duplicate the ad groups, right? So I'm going to select this. I'm gonna click edit, uh, we're gonna copy it, X out of that, and let's paste it here. And we're gonna select this campaign, let's click done. Uh, we don't have to pause the new ad group. And now what we wanna do, you know, as an example, we wanna go into this ad group and we wanna select different audiences because we wanna test, we wanna see what works. So in this case, we selected football fans, soccer keywords, football topics. Let's do something else for the different ad group, okay? So I just wanna show you where to go if you wanna change your topics, if you wanna change your audiences. So we're gonna give it a second to load. Okay, so it finally loaded. So let's head over um, here. So we're gonna change the title in a second. Let's first actually select what we want. So we're gonna select that here. Let's go into audiences. And we wanna remove the audience that we selected, right? So give it a second. So here were our audiences. So we're gonna click here, we're gonna delete. We're gonna remove that. And if you wanna change anything else, you would go into demographics, you would go into placements. So give it a second. Okay, so now it's removed. So if you selected any demographics, any age groups, you would send it here. Uh, we go to placements. Now our ads haven't appeared anywhere yet, but what we wanna do is click the little pencil icon, click edit ad group targeting. And we wanna make sure that we change these up, right? Because we wanna test, we wanna split test this, make it different. So over here we have some targeting and let's suppose, you know, instead of soccer, we're gonna edit that and we're gonna delete this. So let's suppose we actually, we don't wanna target this. Okay, so we're gonna click done. Let's suppose we no longer want to target by keywords. We're going to close out of that. Let's say topics. Let's say we want to target, um, let's type in soccer and see what, what suggestions we get. Let's suppose we want to target instead of soccer, we want to say live sporting events in, 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 instead of football. Okay, so we'll click done here. And we're going to scroll down. We'll set that at off. Everything else looks good. And yeah, so let's suppose for this one, we're adding only live sporting events. Now you could narrow it further. You can select keywords, targeting, you could set audiences, which we've already selected. Um, and yeah, so live sporting events, let's click save. And so now our ads are only gonna be showing to the specific audience that we selected. In this case, I believe we removed them. So now for this specific ad group, we're only gonna be showing ads to, if we go back here, only the live sporting events. So let's go back. Uh, let's select our campaign again. So on the left hand side is where you select the campaigns. Let's click on Teespring Soccer and let's head over into ad groups and let's change the name of that ad group, right? So here, number two, we're going to select that. We're going to delete everything and we're just going to say uh, this was a topic. 
live sporting events. And that's an example, and that's what you would do. And then if you wanna change your ad, you're gonna click on this option here. You're gonna go into ads and you would you know, select that here and you would edit it. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Again, if you guys want more details on how to promote these products and how to retarget them on Google Ads, check out my courses. And also, if you want to know how to promote Teespring products on Facebook ads, I have a video on that as well. I'm going to link it in the description and a little circle is going to swoop up from above. Click on that and you'll be able to see a full complete video just like this, but on how to promote it on Facebook. So that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.